third week of practice uh, here in fall camp. What, what have you learned about those guys so far in these three weeks? Um, what have I learned? I don't know if I've learned anything. We know I'm pretty good. We got better this week. Uh, we turned the heat up a lot. A lot of winners, a lot of losers. Leadership council, jersey numbers revealed, starting lineups, backups, scout team guys. Uh, just a lot of ripping the Band-Aid off, so to speak. It's always great when everybody's getting to practice and everybody's playing and everybody's getting the ball. But where are you when, when times get rough? And that's what a person of integrity is about. Today we use the old John Gordon about a hard boiled egg or a carrot or coffee bean. When the water's hot, which one are you? And our, our guys have been, you know, the coffee bean. They, they've been fantastic. They might not like what's happened, but they've handled it. And uh, just like they've done with George Floyd and COVID-19 and all the civil unrest and passing of Bright's wisdom, these guys just keep handling adversity, and they keep showing me the type of men they are. Now, I, I do not know what that's going to translate into wins and losses, uh, but I know we've got some great young men that have some character. Miles My, Benning just told us he thought these last three days of practice, he felt a different tempo and style, and he said specifically from you that he felt it a little different. Have you felt anything different these last three days of practice? No, I haven't. It's been intentional. Uh, I knew when, you know, when you start revealing, everybody wanted to be zero through nine. All those guys were very competitive for that. A lot of those guys wanted to be on the leadership council. All of them want to be starters. I knew the heat was going to get turned up this week when we revealed the winners. And that's why this week was, you know, the motto is win the day. We were very competitive all week. We had winners and losers all week. Every segment we did this week, there was a winner or a loser some way or another. And uh, to the victory goes the spoils. And to the loser goes push-ups or up-downs or running or whatever it might be. It's, it's real life. Not everybody gets a ribbon. If we've ever learned that, 2020, not many ribbons given out this year. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, Greg, you're up. Jeff, how are you? We're good, Greg. We, uh, we learned this week that you guys had two positive COVID-19 tests come back in the latest round of testing. I'm wondering just to what extent is that a cause for concern at this point? How are you guys viewing that? None, because we had zero this week. So, uh, you know, we've had five the entire summer. So that's so talking about a bunch of tests. But I say none. None's a slight exaggeration, Greg, to be honest. There's always concern. Uh, I guess if the test would have come back today, we had a lot more. I would have been very concerned. But since we bounced back with a zero, I think the two was actually good for us. I hate for the two kids that got – that had tested positive for it. But I know it it raised our level of awareness. I felt like we were getting a little relaxed. Uh, I think I even mentioned that to you all a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but I know once those two positives came back, I didn't have to remind anybody about their masks. They, they've all had their mask on. And, uh, you know, we played two weeks in a day. So if anybody's positive, they're probably going to be missing a game. So it, it's gotten, it's always been very serious, but uh, it's the healthiest place to be right now. We're, you know, we're getting, we've been tested once a week. Now it's going three times a week. And we're, we're going to know where we are as a team. Did those two positives create any kind of disruption in the practice routine? I know there can be a contact tracing and other guys who have to go into quarantine and things like that. Yeah, there were some of those ramifications. Uh, we had guys that had to get quarantined and, you know, next man up. And luckily, they weren't in the same position. They were all, they were kind of, uh, you know, uh, different positions. So that, that, where it's going to be really bad, it's bad anyway if you get tested for positive. But I mean, like I said, 99% of the time, whatever the stat is, you'll be fine. I don't know the exact number, so don't quote me on that. Uh, but like I said, my own children had it. And I was in the house with them for three months, and I never got it. So it's it's very interesting how that all.
have those players recovered or were they symptomatic or how did that situation play out? Yeah, they're fine. Uh, they were asymptomatic, no symptoms. They were shocked. They were demanding retests. They, they, they still don't think they have it. Uh, so uh, it is what it is. We've talked about the protocol really going back a few months now, and it seems like at this point you're testing weekly. Is that sort of the plan through the year, or could that be ran a little bit? How do you see that evolving? Well, we got to go by Conference USA. We've been going weekly, but Conference USA is going to be three times a week. So it now goes three times a week. Is that that's that's what the players deserve so much credit. I don't know that people really realize people just say testing. Well, I mean, it's 200 and – 20 people around here, they got to get tested. You know, that's a couple of hours of our day. Uh, and our UT Health System has been fantastic. Getting uh, Q-tips very deep up in your nostrils, uh, which I know probably you've all done it too. But it's uh, what these players have gone through. That's before they come to practice. You know, then, then you come out there on the turf, and it's 100 degrees and pads. And, but they're amazing. What, what these young men have done and put up with and gone through, uh, it's, it's an honor to be their coach. Do you know when you're going to that three times a week? Is that before the first game, or has that been worked out yet? Uh, I would imagine next week since we start playing. But I, I'm not, I, I didn't read the email. I got it today. Uh, but since we start, since Conference USA picks up next week, I would imagine next week. I'm, I'm not for sure, Greg. Got it, got it. Thanks, Jeff. All right, Chase, you're up. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Hey, you mentioned you have your starters. I have to ask your weekly, uh, do, are you ready to publicly announce your starting quarterback? No, sir, I'm not, but I uh, appreciate you asking. And I just don't see how it benefits, does any good um, right now. So, but, but thanks for asking. Absolutely. Hey, uh, with, I know Texas high school football is so near and dear to you. A lot of the small schools get started tonight. With all the uncharted territory and all the unprecedented type stuff that's going on right now, what would your message be to those young men and coaches tonight? I think they already know the message. You know, we might have taken this sport for granted, and uh, we don't. Uh, every morning I drive in in my truck, I'm just thrilled to get, put the whistle around my neck put the cap on, and go affect young men. And I know the THSCA is about that. Those players are about that. Uh, some great rivalries going off tonight. And uh, I can't wait to see the scores and text all my buddies. And You have to be a reporter that's covered football for a long time or been in the locker room to really realize how deep of a relationship a high school football coach has with his players. And uh, it's a special, special thing. And uh, I don't think they need to hear my message, but I think that they, they won't take it for granted ever again if they ever did. Excellent. And to kind of build on my first question, because I have to ask again, are you ready to reveal who got the single digit number? We're going to start doing that Sunday night. Uh, we're going to release the guys that had the two one Oh, uh, those three will be released first, and then we'll start doing the singles from then on out. We want that to be a big deal around here. Uh, hopefully I'm here for a long time, and that can be something we all look forward to each year. And When we see somebody in zero through nine, we know those guys represent the brand, triangle of toughness, the 2-1-0. And uh, kids have really bought into it, and we're proud of it. And the kids that didn't get it are hell-bent on getting it on next year. So I can't wait. Excellent. Thank you, Coach.